If you could just give me a thumbs up if you see the buy or lease. Okay, cool. And that's what, exactly what we're going to be talking about. You know, when does it make sense to buy or when does it make more sense to lease? And what percentage of your business, and again, I don't want to overgeneralize it, but what percentage of your business do you think should be one versus the other? Uh, first of all, who can kind of give me an idea as to percentage-wise, what would you say, how many times, and again, I'm not overgeneralizing, and I understand that, but what percentage of the time do you think a lease would make more sense over a purchase today? Just give me a number, percentage. Who wants to go first? Just a number. Come on. Not everybody at one time. Angie's here. 95%. 95%. 95%. Okay, what? Oh, because like, of the fact that. No, 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 no. no. Why, oh. What? 95% what? Lease is that what you're saying? Or purchase? Oh, yes. No, lease. Okay. PPA. 95% uh -huh. lease. Okay, so we have 95% for lease on one side. Anybody else? 30% on lease. 30% lease. Okay. Anybody else? 90% lease, 10% purchase. Okay, 90% at least. Anybody else? Come on. 80% at least. Okay, by anybody. Okay. And, and of course, 40%. Not be... what is it? 40%. Okay, perfect. And, and you know, there's no exact number that we're going to obviously apply to everybody, but I think that just with some very solid understanding of where the market is and where it's going, uh, I'm going to ask probably our top producer um, for, for sure in the in the team and also probably among the top in the entire company, which is Mr. Red Stafford, who has, uh, Red, have you hit Centurion yet or you're about to, or what, what's going on with that? I'm, I'm close. Let's see. I don't know where I'm at here. Let's see. So just as those, those that don't know, uh, Power recognizes you as a Centurion when you close 100 contracts and Red is flirting with that, even though A, no prior experience in solar, B, um, just over a year and a half in Power, to have a, almost all oh, my help to have 20 would be a good thing, but I don't know how close he is, but I know he's getting really close to it. And I just wanted to. Right, I think it. we need to do a, a dinner or a party when we, when Red get the 100. Yes, I agree. That is that, a that's very a... important. At the, I agree because I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people, and, I, and again, I don't mean to beat up on anybody, but I just want to not take away from the big deal that this represents. Mr. Red Stafford, I mean, just the mere, just the fact that we're discussing um, hitting 100 contracts is simply impressive. And so having said that, what I'm going to do is, Brett, what's the number? Uh, at least 80%. Got it. If you're, okay. in, if you're in the big three, you know, if you're not counting, you know, the, the municipality utilities, if you're talking about um, the big three, it's at least 80%. Okay. And at least 80 percent i agree especially if you're in the three uh big one the big three as we call them seg and e pg and e or sce so again if you are with the municipalities so that's something that somebody should have asked are we are talking about a uh, big three are we talking about a municipality ladwp and even then with some of the municipalities they do definitely limit how much you can offset and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to get into here in just one second as well. But what I wanted to share with you is a real life case. I mean, I'm actually going to share with you a real life case that happened just yesterday. So it is fresh. I blurred out the name, the address, doesn't matter. But I want to show you what we're talking about because we could, unbeknownst to us, be doing our clients a disservice. I spoke to one person this week who it's a small world, just so you know, when it comes to solar, uh, somebody in power gave this person a deal that unfortunately is not appropriate for this person. And the downside of that is that that's an egg that cannot be unscrambled. Does that make sense? Once they install it, it's a done deal. There's nothing any, and I would hate to be this consultant that has to live with this. And the number one reason a lot of agents within and outside of power are doing this. Number one, reason. what do you think is the number one reason we might leave somebody worse off than they were before? Why? Well, anybody, what do you no. think? This is Just neglect. No. Okay, neglect. That's a great way to put it. Anybody else? There's somebody else. I think not knowing, not maybe not researching enough first. Uh, and, and this is where, A, in, both of you are 100% right. This is where we're talking about, of course, 
who you are working with as a mentor, because ultimately the mentor should have caught this. Now, the reality is that there are some times where even mentors, and I'm not up to speed. Let me give you an example. If somebody doesn't have the credentials, I had a few deals I had to pass over to Rhett because Sunnova was taking so long with my credentials that it was an error on their part. They apologized, whatever the case might be. And the point that I'm making there is that unless you have the credentials, you cannot truly, even as a mentor, you cannot compare the benefits of one thing versus the other, meaning the lease versus the actual purchase, because you can't even run it. Does that make sense? So if I'm a mentee and I go to Rhett and I say, hey, Rhett, I got a deal. Now, Rhett's probably going to do what I was doing, which was a different mindset before NEM 3.0 and the rise of the leases and all this other stuff. And so therefore, it might be a pretty good deal. And before you know it, we end up doing them a disservice more than anything. Now, this also plays into something else I'm going to share with you, and I hope nobody here takes it the wrong way because I'm not trying to do that. But remember what I've been telling you over and over that we are going to see a consolidation. We are going to see a consolidation of the industry, of the sellers, and so on. And here's, I'm not, you know, you know, putting it up, but you know, here's somebody leaving the business, putting up all their power stuff for sale, you know, on, on Facebook, right? And it, I can agree with them more. If something's not working out for you, then we probably do have to look for something else. I don't want that to happen to anybody. I want to make sure that you are empowered to know the options that are out there so that as you become a mentor, you are at least knowing that you're going to become a mentor in a new world. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and start the actual training and we're going to kick it off. So we're going to talk hey, about the- I, I, Javier? Yes. I have a, I have a question. Sorry. Sure. Um, can we define, I know Rhett said 80%, but can we define truly, because I'm in DWP area and DWP does not allow a PPA. They only allow a lease. So of this 80% that favor a lease, can we define that as a true lease versus a PPA? Because I know one of the gals mentioned, you know, 90% or 95% PPA, but a PPA is drastically different than a lease. Yeah, we're, so we're talking about a traditional lease. Traditional okay. lease, not PPAs. Okay, so not maybe people want to change their answer then from 95%, P, you know, lease because a PPA is traditionally an ability to purchase something in five years versus a true lease, which is, you know. And we're talking lease. about, yes, and to clarify, thank you for that. We are talking about a traditional lease. That's what we're talking about, which I'm going to show you, by the way, here on, in, in just oh. one second. And so just to kind of give you an example, you cannot show somebody a proposal for a potential lease without being fully accredited with Sonova. So what does that mean? That means that if you're working with somebody who does not, who's not even certified and credentialed and has login credentials, remember the leases, we show those proposals in a different portal. It's really confusing as hell. So you do your, here, I'll give an example. I have somebody right here that is, the purchase side of the house. So we're going to compare apples to apples for the most part, if you would. And I'll show you how uh, what I mean by that in just one second. So you see uh, purchase. This is a straight what we've all done. Now, part of the problem, just so you know, revolves around the fact that we just spent the last year and a half or the last year telling people how leases were the devil in, in the flesh. And so, therefore, it's pretty awkward, you know, doing a 180, if you would, and telling people the opposite. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It just means you're up to speed and that the market has changed. We got net metering 3.0. And in my opinion, the number one thing that killed the purchases was not as much the net 3.0. That was a lot, but the high, and I do mean high interest rates. Somebody this week asked me, yeah, but we could still get a 3.99. And I go, that's not true. You can calculate a payment at 3.99, but they are literally paying through the nose. And I'll give you an example of that right now on the screen. And so what you see here primarily is just a vision, if you would, a proposal. That's all it is. And so we explain to them how it works. We explain to them this. This is the actual house. This is an 8.4 kilowatt system, um, you know, with uh, two batteries, the whole nine yards. So 20 kilowatt battery, which is, of course, 210 kilowatt uh, battery. And so anyways, we get to the whole thing. We get to the whole thing. And this ended up showing the savings and so on. And this gave them a payment of around 314 
with a permanent payment it's starting at month number 19 of $447. This is a $73,000 loan. Uh, they do qualify for a $22,000 federal tax credit, which brings the net system cost to around $51,000. Now, we are going to get into some, not all, the details in regards to why, when there's no batteries involved, we are going to keep the offset yeah. to around 65%. A client of mine had two other proposals from two other solar companies, and they were giving them only 65% uh, offset. And their question to me is, I'm assuming they're doing that because they just want to keep the price low instead of putting me at 100% where I want to be. And the answer to that is what? Is that true or is that false? In, in case you missed it, I, I said that, it, let's just say you talk to a client, and they have two proposals from two other companies. And on those proposals, they showed their no battery and they showed an offset of 65%. And the client said, well, why are they only showing me 65% when I really want to be at 100% offset? Are they doing that just because I'm assuming they want to keep the price down and then turn the payment down? Is that true? I mean, the, the, the answer is no, guys. Why? The answer is <laughs> The answer is no. And why Why is it a no, guys? Anybody? I, I, I don't know for sure, but isn't there um, some agencies that are only allowing, I mean, like up to 65 or, you know, not the full 100% offset? Well, one of the things that we're going to have to start understanding as we get away from the 100% or even like we used to do 125% offset, I have 120% yeah. offset in my home. And it turned out I just completed my first year and it wasn't enough. And so, again, understand that we are changing the way we think. And so the answer is not because of that particular reason. Uh, what you need to understand, which I had to go back to Rhett to have it clarified, because I kept asking him, Rhett, listen to me, just tell me why would I not choose 100% over 65%? And it basically took a combination of things. Well, I'm going to show you one of them, and I'll start kind of like right here and when Rhett finally explained it to me in such a way that I understood it, that's when I stopped fighting. And, and not only did I stop fighting the, what am I missing? Because there's got to be something wrong. But most importantly, I started to put my client's interest even more at heart because now I wasn't just ignor ignorantly enthusiastic. I was actually educated. And so, Rhett, can you explain that briefly, as briefly as you can? Sure. Okay. So basically, guys, during the day, when we're, the solar panels are producing the most energy, um, if you do not have a battery, then all of that energy is getting kicked back to the utility company. And if we're talking about NEM 3.0, so we're talking about the, top, the big three right now, they're only getting paid about three and a half cents. So like 10% of what they're getting charged. So for every 10 kilowatt hours, they get they sell to the utility. Uh, utility company late it there um you've got to look at okay so where are we at to where the the um, system starts selling money selling the credits back to the grid and that's why you only want to take it to about 65 percent maybe even less in some cases um you know but on an average you know during the summer it's probably even less but um it otherwise all that money is just a waste because if you look at the, the kilowatt cost per hour or under the new plan, you know, typically we're going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 cents. And if they're if they're paying 15 to 20 cents per kilowatt hour under our new plan and only earning three and a half cents when they sell that to the utility, then it's it's a total waste of money. You know, so um I had one one client um um, actually it was this client, I think that we talked to Javier, they were like, oh, we want to, we want to go hundred percent, but we don't want a battery. And no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. It just doesn't make any sense because you're going to be wasting all that money later. And I think in a, like Rhett said, simply put this way, this particular client, we're going to reduce their cost of electricity to something like 22 cents a kilowatt. Okay, they're going to pay 22 cents per kilowatt, but then they're going to sell it to the uh, utility company for five cents a kilowatt. I mean, 
It makes absolutely no sense. So thank you, Rhett. And, and that's when I fought it. And I kept telling Rhett, Rhett, I, I don't, I don't, I'm clearly missing something because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Why would I not want to make 100%? Just because you take it to 100% offset doesn't mean they're going to use 100% of the power that they generate. And just like Tony uh, just simply put into the chat, most people use 60 to 70% of their power at night. Without batteries, you will only offset 30 to 40% of your power at most. And so that's going to take all of you a while to process because it took me weeks to really appreciate. I didn't get it. And at least when I didn't get it, I just didn't you know, just say, screw them. I'm going back to 100%. I kept asking until it was explained to me in such a way that I said, aha, uh -huh, now I get it. And to make it worse, like this client, we showed but them- in case like that, uh, you're going to have a bill from the utility company for the difference. That's correct. Exactly. And I'm, okay. I'm not talking about a $10, $15 connection fee now. We're talking about $150 a month. That's utility. right. And so now your clients that look at you and say, wait a minute, I'm paying $200 here, and I'm paying $200 there. When I was paying $350, what the hell did you do to me? And so that's called, they hate you. And so that's why I'm saying that we have to be very careful. Now, the batteries solve that problem because now, in essence, what the problems are going to do, the, I mean, the batteries are going to do is they're just going to allow you to capture more of that power and use it yourself at night instead of giving it back to the actual utility companies. And so in this example, that's what we did with this person. We had them with two batteries, 20 uh, kilowatts total. And so this is it. So if you want to write this down and remember it, 73, here, I'll write it down because I'm not going to remember the damn thing. And so in this example, we were at 73,000 and then that gave us, uh, or gave them a payment. Let me just go ahead and close this. Uh, gave them a payment of 314 to begin with and then 447, which when you compare it to what they were paying before on a monthly basis, it's kind of like a swap to a certain degree, if you would, a swap, give or take. And so they're because they're playing 414. So 414 plus over here, 447. Okay, uh, that just kind of gives you an idea because to the 447, we got to add 30 more dollars, of course, on top of that. And so the point that I'm making is that, that this is what the purchase. Now, if I was dealing with the mentor, if I was a mentor that didn't have access for whatever reason to, let's just say, Sonova, I have nothing else to tell them. Does that make sense? This is it. It's all or nothing here. And it will be a terrible disservice because they're going to literally be paying through the nose to be nothing more than a micro power generating plant for Edison with nothing for themselves. And so what we did is we went ahead and ran it through the Sunnova proposal. Different website, different credentials, different everything, different platform. So if you don't have, you don't have access to this or your mentor doesn't have access to this, how the hell on earth are you going to give educated options to your client? How? I would never. I don't care if it's rent. I don't care who the hell it is. If somebody tells me, I look, I know what's best for them. Just give them the purchase. I'll be like, Rent, that's fine. But at least for my sake, let me see the difference. I need to train. Because remember, part of you using a mentor is not just somebody to do it for you. I don't, I, I don't do it for anybody. I want to train you so that after three deals, you have enough business to sustain yourself and enough knowledge to bring value to people. And so this is what the Sunnova proposal looks like. And it is complicated. It is complicated, man. It's not like you just click one here and copy it to the next one. You got to go back and design the system, come back and input the system, go back and get the kilowatts, come back. I mean, it's just complicated as hell. So you better work with a mentor that has experience in this field. This is kind of what their proposal looks like. It kind of looks kind of the same. Same thing. It does explain nighttime, daytime. Now, this one is with two batteries using the BOGO or buy one, get one battery. Buy one, get one free battery with Sonova leasing. And so we'll talk about some of the benefits of one versus the other. And as you can see, this one, even though we have an escalator built into it of 2.90, the initial payment is $242. Now, the first question that most people would ask, what do you think is the next question? The payment looks good where it starts, but what do you think most people, consumers, and you would probably be asking themselves? What is it? Anybody? Is the payment going up? Yes, the payment going And if it is, because we'll tell them right, here, right away, that this is with an escalator of 2.9. That means your payment will escalate up every year. 
but you'll know exactly what the payment. Now, remember, we were with the other one, which is the uh, with the purchase, we were at 447 plus the bill of $30, I think it was, which is 477. Now, that's higher than what they pay right now, but at least it might be locked in for the uh, payment part, at least, and so on. So that's what, of course, but it's going to go up. Okay, well, let's look at how much is, let's compare it to the 477. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this. Okay, currently you pay about 435. Your new bill is going to be 226.90. Now you are going to have to uh, obviously pay the utility company, but because this is calculating you generating more power and holding on to that extra power and using it yourself without having to buy it from the utility company, it actually shows you, if you look at it, your utility bill of uh, $16.08, which is more of than anything, the connection plus the $42 for the battery. So when we compare the, as we call it, all-in price for the lease, as you can see, this is just the way it goes on and on and on, all the benefits that come with it. And we'll talk about some of the differences. But in this example, you will see that the payment's going to be $257 the first year. Now it goes up to $263 the second year. 10 years later, it's at 316. And at the end of the entire 25-year lease, the payment is 456, which is Go to the next as, page, Javier. I'm sorry? Go to the next page. Oh, sorry. This is without the ACH. You're right. So what this simply means is that this means without them, they're, they're going to get billed. We don't want that. We want them to have ACH to get a discount. And so what you'll see now is the discounted one. They'll start at 242.98. They have two batteries. And even at the end, the final year of the 25-year lease, it's at 441, which is lower than their second payment or their permanent payment on the purchase. Now, a pop quiz outside of RET. One of the things that's very important that has me very uneasy with these batteries uh, is the fact that, wait a minute, I'm going to go ahead and finance. I'm going to finance a battery for 25 years, even though going into it, you know damn well that battery is not going to survive 25 years. And 25 years is nowhere near what it was when it was brand new. That's a hard, that's a very big problem for me when it comes to financing on top of everything, the batteries, that 25 years later, I'm still paying for the battery that died, whatever, 10 years earlier or whatever the case might be. So how long do the, when you purchase, how long is the warranty on the batteries? How long do we warranty them for, I should say, on a purchase? 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. And when it comes to a lease, now we're talking about Sunnova, how long are they warrantied for? 25 years. That is 25. 25 years. So there's the peace of mind. Now, the flip side to the whole thing is, of course, with the uh, power care, we do 30-year bumper to bumper. Here, well, it's the lease is 25 years. You're going to get that for 25 years. But, of course, with it comes the fact that there's literally no maintenance on either one of them other than hosing them down every once in a while. And if you really want to do it every couple of years, pay somebody to come scrub them down. Well, not scrub them down, but just wipe them down. You know, there's companies now that do that. They, they specialize in cleaning solar panels, which is pretty cool. They don't need to, you know, and if you really, really want to just tie a damn squeegee to your broomstick or something and just wipe them down. I just hold my, uh, especially after uh, cloudy or not cloudy days, but when there's a lot of ash or whatever the hell might be to be able to do that. But I need you to see the difference in value, the difference in value between this 242. And let me write this down. So I hope you're doing this as well. 242. And then it ends at 441. And when, and when you compare that again, now there are going to be other things to consider. And I'm going to go into that right now with you. And so uh, here we go. So here they would start at 314. Over there, they start at 242. Over here, they end at 447. Over there on the highest year, it's 441. Think about that. Think about that, especially, I don't think it makes any sense to go solar in this world without batteries. And I don't think battery technology is where it needs to be. I'll be the first to tell you that. I have two Teslas. I had an S initially and I killed the battery and it was $14,000 to replace the battery. Um, thankfully in California, for all of you that have electric cars, there's a state law that says- Also, any 
Also, Javier, one important point that Red mentioned in the training is not everybody gets the tax credit. Okay, yes. it's a, only a percentage of people get the tax credit. So something that I pick up very good from Red uh, meeting was check your income tax line twenty four. That that was excellent, you know. And uh, and I think uh, a service to the client is to say check your income tax line twenty four. What's your liability with taxes? If the person is an independent contractor and doesn't reach that, selling doesn't make too much sense. You know, lease will be the best way to go. Yes. And on top of that, the way that it, we describe it, it's almost as if somebody leasing, it's almost as if they just get the tax credit built into the lower payment. Does that make sense? And so if you look at the 314, we always tell people, if you take your entire rebate, um, I'm sorry, fuck, I didn't say rebate. If you take your entire tax credit of $22,000, it applied towards your loan balance, your loan would reamortize it and it would stay at 314. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And then that's when people say, yeah, I don't want to get my credit. Just apply it. Apply. Well, we can't do that here. It doesn't work that way. You have to get the money. Good luck. And then you have to send it into the lender. When you do the lease, it's kind of like doing that where you're not getting the tax credit because you don't get a federal tax credit on the lease. However, your payment does start at 242, which is less than the 314. And you end up at 441 in 25 years. For guys, now, let me ask you a question. In this particular client, if, let me back up over here, if they are paying 414 a month today, what do you think you're going to be paying in five years, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner? What do you think from four, four? Just what do you think? What do you guys think? Anyway. Five million. What is it? 540. 540 if you're lucky. Okay, call it 500. And then in 10 years, what do you think it'll be? 625. I mean, call it 625 in 10 years. We can go ahead and show them here. 625 in 10 years. You're at 300 bucks. You're still lower than you are today. And so what I'm saying is that this is 100% a no-brainer to make sure that either A, you are, I don't care if you're tier two or tier 50, whatever the hell you are, you better be certified with Sonova so that you can run this for a client. Otherwise, stop talking to people. If all you're going to do is talk to them about a purchase because you can't talk about a lease, you're doing it with the service. And here's the good news. You can end this webinar right now, jump on Sun Nova, Sun Nova. and get certified in about, how long did it take you, Rhett? Oh, I don't know. Sun Nova, I think, was only probably an hour and a half. Call it three if you're slow, okay? And in three hours from now, you're a brand new person. You bring more value to people. How do you think that then when you become a mentor, as all of you should, what... I mean, what kind of value do you think you're going to be bringing to other people as mentees? When somebody works with me, they know that they're going to work with me, not just on closing their deal, whether it's a lease or whether it's a purchase, but most importantly on how to market. I'm going to take you under my wing and I'm going to show you how to generate business so that by the time you are done, by the time you are done with the three sales with me, if you do three, you should probably just do one or two with me and then try somebody else like Brad and vice versa. So you can see different styles, but I'm going to put a focus on helping you become cash flow positive as quickly as possible and always knowing where your next sale is going to come from. Because when it comes to marketing, we leave nothing to chance. I need to know, I need to make money every month, just so you know. Not every other month, not you know, twice a year. Power pays multiple times a week in some cases. Why not collect the check every time? Every time. But if you don't have this, if you don't know this, if you don't understand this, it's very difficult. Uh, the other unknown is what will, will it cost to buy? Okay, that's a great question from Tony. Um, there is no buyout. Okay, that's okay. And here's, here's what I was going to show you. This is very important. The other unknown is what will it cost to buy it at the end? Think it will probably be just a few grand. Now, here's the answer. You won't have to guess because we got the expert, Mr. Red Stafford. Red, go ahead. On a lease, there is no buyout of the equipment option. Um, on a PPA. Hey, right, you broke and you broke final year. I said uh, on a PPA, there's a buyout for the equipment, but not on the lease. So at the end of the lease, technically, um, you, they just come and pick it up. However, based upon what we know from 
uh, the um, Sonoba rep, uh, at the end of the lease, um, either the company, Sonoba, has to notify, uh, Sonoba has to notify that they're going to come pick it up, or the uh, right, you're, um, you're, homeowner you're, you're, has to request, sorry, <laughs> looks like my internet's having an issue, but if neither party requests a removal, the equipment automatically reverts to the ownership of the homeowner. There. At no cost. By no cost. Way. That's pretty cool. And it's in the contract. So That's in the contract, yeah. It's in the contract. And, and by the way, I'm going to hold another class later, uh, and I'm going to show more of the contract of the actual diving in, because Sonova, is, their uh, proposal is pretty long. It's like, I don't know, how many pages, right? 65 or what? I, don't, I have no clue. It's, it's about how many pages, right? Uh, on the lease, like 65. <laughs> <laughs> and so and we're going to show you because I always I'm believe. Sorry, that's, on the, that's on the proposal. I don't know. The actual contract isn't 65. Yeah. Right? But I you like remember, to. That's part of the 35 pages or so as part of the uh, consumer disclosures. Disclosures, yeah. And so the point that I'm making is it's important because the more you learn, the more educated you become, and the more educated you sound, the more credible you become. Does that make sense? And so one thing I will tell you, a secret I learned a long time ago, and for those that haven't seen it, I, I actually, it's already due. I think it's either next week or the week after. It's a free, not a free, it's a course that I do, and it's called uh, Mastering Influence. It's a course I took many, many years ago from Tony Robbins. I'm actually going to give you a copy of it free. And so if you want to be on it, mark your calendar for next week. Uh, and it's called, you know, and one of the things that I learned a lot, I learned a lot, but one of the things that I apply to this day, even though I learned that probably 18 years ago, <clears throat> is that selling is nothing more than the transference of emotion. Does that make sense? Now, if you hear Rhett, I hope if you hear me, but I know with Rhett, I hear positive emotion. This guy knows, if part of my French, this guy knows his shit, you know? And he's telling me about this, about stuff that's supposed to happen in 25 years. And just when somebody thinks about maybe here's an objection, he just simply explains it away in such a way that I say, damn, this guy, you know, he know. And before you know it, my guard is down and I'm focusing on the presentation, which is what you want to do. That's why you have such a <laughs> such a high closing ratio, because a good portion of, of the people that he actually meets with do it. And none of them, most of them, the vast majority don't know him. And that's what I'm saying that with you, with me, with all of us, we have to make sure we're doing our part to be at that level as well. Now, what I, I don't have it in front of me, but Rhett, can you put up your flow code if you don't mind? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll share it with you right now. Uh, yeah, can you share? Uh, let me share my screen. Yes, I'll do it right now. And I want to also give you an update on something else. So. Let me go ahead and get Rhett's up there. I want you to have his info. I want you to have my info. I'm going to give it to you right now. Uh, oh, shit. Hold on. Uh, well, there you go. Rhett. Okay. It should be up and running right now, Rhett. Cool. Well, that's an ugly code. Uh, let's see. What happened, right? What happened to your flow code? Um, see, what I want to do is also give you this to have you look at. And so let's just give me one second. But what I want to also do is, is kind of uh, change, uh, shift gears a little bit and show you something. Uh, let's see. Javier. Yes. Uh, anything we need to know about in case the homeowner who wants to sell the property or refinance once he's in, in the lease? Uh... I mean, for the most part, they're going to be in the same table as with the purchase, right? Right. I mean, assuming or go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You can, um, uh, even though the lease does not have, um, even though the lease does not have an equipment buyout, um, you can buy out the lease so that um, if the if they want to just uh, buy the home with a uh, with whatever the remaining lease is, they're not making any payments, but they still have access and are still benefiting from <laughs> the solar. <laughs> Sorry. Um, or you can transfer the solar contract to the new homeowner as well. 
So it works just like the purchase. And so in that scenario, there won't be anything that will hurt them or traumatically help them. It's just, again, like he said, depending on what they want to do, uh, it's what's going to they allow them to do it. And so I think, in my opinion, that's one of the things that, personally, I like a lot because, again, it's not going to be any different whatsoever than to just go ahead and, and, and deal with it as well. A great question. Great question. Any other question from anybody? Javier, in, the same, in the same scenario, it. what about if the new buyer doesn't want to doesn't want the lease? Doesn't what want the options of the commoner. Hypothetically, doesn't want the lease. Yeah, doesn't. So let's assume that doesn't want to assume the lease. Well, then the the homeowner could pay off the lease and just transfer the um, um, the production contract part of it. Right. So they will work it out with the price, make some adjustment, and so the homeowner can pay. Yeah. That would no, keep in mind. Keep up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Rick. And on a lease, the other thing they can do is, let's say the the uh, homeowner doesn't want solar. Period. Then um, at the homeowner's cost, um, Sonova would allow them to move it to their new home. But the homeowner would have to pay for the uninstallation and reinstallation on the new home. Right, right. And, and along those lines, remember that we want to make sure that they understand that they would have to take care of that, uh, you know, one way or the other. Or if they wanted to go ahead and because uh, they could just simply price it into the home, right? Right. And just have it paid off the escrow, the, the lease itself is what I'm saying. Yeah, you could do that as well. You can do that. You know, just simply price it to the home, play it through escrow, and then they can advertise it as paid off uh, solar, even though it's not because it's under lease. It will be by the time the escrow closes. Uh, what I did is I put up my screen because it has two things. It has my contact information. It also has my calendar or availability. And so in case if anybody needs help, you've got, uh, you know, obviously you have Rats, you have mine. We're both certified with Sunova. And again, I'm not beating up on anybody or anything, but to me, nothing matters more. <laughs> nothing matters more than making sure we are giving our clients the best possible service. And it's impossible to do that without having access to the Sunova platform. Because I'm telling you right now, there are some instances there. And you got to make sure, guys. You also need to make sure that you are certified with. Um, the store, the energy storage, because um, you cannot sell batteries right now without being certified. Yes, this is stuff we can all do, literally right now. This is all stuff. This is all stuff we can do at the completion of this webinar. Uh, I just did a class earlier about at nine, uh, 9 a.m. on how to declutter your life, and it starts by decluttering your mind. And it starts. I'm not going to give the whole class. I gave everybody a a book. Uh, as homework. And that's what I encourage you to do here. You know, if you're not certified with energy, if you're not certified with Sonova, just so you know, you're completely useless to a client right now because you're not going to provide them with their true options. And the worst part is you can go in there talking to talk about just the sell and they'll believe you. That's the sad part. They'll trust you. And before you know it, like this one person I spoke to yesterday, they're used, <coughs> they're screwed and tattooed by you. And that's something you're going to have to live for. And I don't want that. And so I encourage everybody to just do your part. Do your part. This business has made me millions in meeting in sales, teams, leadership. Uh, that's why I do webinars. I, you know, some of you are part of my team, some of you are not, but you're part of the power family. And then we got even people that come out from other solar companies. They just hear about my trade. Bless their heart. They saw me on YouTube and then they, you know. But one thing I will tell you, if you ever want my help and the same goes for rep, make sure you tag us as a mentor because we are... We have zero availability during the week, zero for quick questions. I had somebody call me the, uh, the other day, quick question. And I know I shouldn't have taken the call because I never do, but I go, hey, what's up? And then the answer to that, I go, that's a great question. We just spoke about that this past Saturday. And <coughs> oh, she said I didn't have time. Oh, that's fine. I've never called you. I'm not, I'm not one. I then another quick question. Yeah. Like we talked about that two Saturdays ago. And then before you know it, we're at like the fourth quick question. And I'm like, look, I don't mean to be rude, but I got to get on a webinar. I'm so sorry. I got to get going. Wait, wait, wait. If you don't mind, call me back after your webinar because I have another quick question. I go, if you have a quick question, solarwebinar.us, Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'll answer away. And that person, of course, is not even here on this webinar. So, you know, like I said, I respect everybody's time. Uh, my time is not worth more than your time, but it's certainly not worth less. 
let's just say we have equal respect for each other's time. And so again, when Rhett is your trainer, I will go ahead and uh, somebody's asking, let me just go back. I don't want to, okay. Most people use 60. Okay. This is it. Where will the payment be 10 years from now? Okay. Andre, do you need me to show it to you, Andre? Or is that a known message? Um, also was, okay. This is from Tony. I was also anti-lease, but I took the son of a training to understand. And same here. I was telling everybody that son of and leases are the devil in the flesh. And uh, now here we are talking about because times change. You have to Move in. So we need to be certified by Sonova and take your certification class to be able to sell Sonova lease. Correct, Noel. Uh, and Sonova lease is the only option for the lease as of right now. That is correct. We need a licensed electrician to sign on existing and uh, unpermitted electrical wear. Solar is over. Oh, that's for the, the general membership. Uh, Rep put his uh, part in there. I'm certified. I have not received my login info. I completed about 70 days ago. My recommendation, I always contact Sonova immediately because I was waiting for like literally 90 days <coughs> before they went ahead and got me. And so in the spirit of making this worth your time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the email address of the Sonova rep for those that are stuck waiting for their credentials because I was stuck forever. I already, I already put it. Oh, okay, right. Thank you. He put it into the chat. Uh, save that, Save that information. And if you have any questions about anything, just make sure you revisit the video. It's going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And solar on YouTube.com is how you get to our domain. Solar on YouTube.com. And once you get there, yeah, please like the video because it helps it. Number two, subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified every time a new video. People ask me all the time, is the video up yet? I just ignore those questions. You know, I think it's a pretty stupid question because if you're subscribed to the channel, it will tell you when it's uploaded or just go to the channel solar on YouTube that part of the whole decluttering thing is, you know, don't make other people's little problems, your problems, because it'll just distract you from the main thing. My focus is to helping you close business and uh, to be able to do that. I'm not the helpline, you know, California has a stupid, you know, uh, chat line and they call it the warm line, you know, not the hot line, you know, it, it, it's a warm line. I'm not the damn warm line. Okay. So don't call me. Uh, you know, with your issues and this and that, I want to help you make money. And the only way we make money is by bringing value to clients. I'm not putting money first. I'm putting people first. And on top of that, instead of giving you the fish, I want to teach you how to fish, how to market. Oh, and one last thing I will show you that's going very, very well for me. This is where a lot of my referrals are coming from because I want to share, <clears throat> I want to share this with you. And here's what I recommend that you do as well. So let me just go back over here and here. And so what I'm going to do I'm gonna to go to every now. Don't go to it. I don't want you. I don't want you there. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, I do a orientation, live orientation for realtors. Don't show up. Don't show up. It's not for you. And so I just want to show you uh, what it looks like and how well it's going. Order patience. And so this is Eventbrite, and everybody. Every time somebody, damn. Realtors and so order notification for realtors and so this is what it looks like. Now, what's nice about this? Let me see if it pops up. If not, okay, I'll just go to my Eventbrite. But I just wanted to show you the amount of demand for realtors realizing that the market's not going to turn around anytime soon, and they need income as they try to stick out the solar and so. Here's here's just a few of them. <clears throat> and so let me see if this pops up. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, it's not doing so I'm just showing you the event, right? And so what I'm doing, which I encourage you to do, is do a weekly event. And so, I, so now what it does, it gives me access to their contact info and to call them up. And so for instance here, I'm going to just move this camera around uh, orders. And I'm just going to put the last 60 days, whatever the hell it is. And so as you can see, cash in on the realtor. This is the ticket that was purchased for the May 19th event. This is for the May 17th, May 17th, May 15th. Look at all these realtors, every single one of them. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Look at this. Unreal. And so what are you looking to do with them? A, ambassadors, at the very least. B, once you show them how you can split your commission with them 50-50 without them even signing up with power, which is what I do, they start dishing you business and then they get greedy and they're like, wait a minute, if I do it that way, I won't get credit? No, 
But then they realize that, well, wait a minute, what if I sign up and I do get credit? Well, they do it and then they sign up. Uh, the one that I did on Friday, she's a broker and she's going to get paid on her own uh, her own deal. That's fine. That's fine. I don't care. I'm not greedy. And I know that the big money, consistent money is in the numbers, not screwing one client for $20,000 and then watch it evaporate because you're going to hell for doing it. Here, just make your $3,500. You know, just make 4000 bucks. So what? They split it. They did give you the business and be generous with them and they will call you giving you business, bringing you the bills. That's the only thing I don't do. <clears throat> People say, here's the name and a number. Unless I have the actual uh, electricity bill, I don't want to talk to your people. I, I don't have time for that. Uh, I need you to, come on, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I need you to do your part. And once you do this, what's really nice about this, look at all these people. You can literally just come in here, <clears throat> click on this, full order details, and there's a name, email, phone number as well. And there it is. How can you not be submitting business that other people are brought to you? Well, because you're not doing anything to give them the value. Bring value to people. Don't be lazy. Don't be greedy. And just simply say, okay, we, we gave you guys a workshop. Remember, we did a workshop in Downey. We gave you a copy of the list uh, for 199 bucks that cost whatever, two grand. I mean, we showed you how to do it. And so if you need business, then finish. Again, I'll just go ahead and do it here. And I promise you, I will let everybody go. And so <clears throat> here, now if I need to get referrals, if I need, I just type in this little magic box, realtors. And from realtors, all these, with, it says on the, some of them are downy, some of them forever. But if I come in here and I click on select all, 22,505. Okay. 22,000. So like I said, I'm going to do a live event in Downey. So I'm going to invite them. Downey, Realtors, click on Select All. And there's 2,162 that I can talk. Because what I'm the name of my presentation used to be how Realtors can cash in on the solar revolution. You know what the name is now? How Realtors like you are cashing in on the solar revolution. That's what I'm saying. So anyways, all right, guys. Well, I just want to say thank you to everybody for all that you do. And I hope that you never take anything I say the wrong way. It's just that I really want you to win sometimes more than you want to win. But you got to do your part. You got to do your part. No more excuses. No more whining. No more I'm busy. I spoke to somebody and I go, what do you got going? Because I had a potential deal for him. Ah, I just have a bunch of what you, the, exact, the exact phrase this guy told me. I just have a bunch of little things going on. I'm like, what, what the hell does that mean? So you can't take business? Are you making money with those little things? Well, no. So what the hell is that? Sounds to me like a lot of little excuses. That's what it sounds like. But hey, <laughs> bless your heart. Good luck with the little things. And let me know how much money you make at the end of the week, okay? Because in business, the way we keep score is by how much money you're making. How much money you make is just a byproduct of helping people Le leverage the power of the solar revolution all right if nothing else i want to say thank you any questions before we break i, I have hey javier this is cute i just have some information for everybody it's a tip that the solar installer gave me when i installed my system if you do wash your panels just make sure you do it early in the morning don't do it like afternoon or the night because they're too hot but early in the morning is is a, a really good time and I monitor my app and stuff. So I've washed them even just with the hose and my power production went up on the next day. So it does help. Just a tip for everybody. And don't be like that idiot moron guy called Javier, which is me, that last year when my panels were new and it was summertime, it was 111 degrees outside, 111. So what do I do? I go out there with my cold ass garden hose and start hosing them down. Oh, and, no. <laughs> and so literally, I looked at my app, it showed nothing. And oh. so I said, I literally, I literally just, uh, I literally just cost me $50,000. I have 33 panels and I just probably cracked them. And by the grace of God, it didn't crack and they're still working. They're pumping out my, you know, <laughs> but so don't be like that guy. Okay. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, anything. <laughs> It's to be able to do that. Is, and, and, you damage it? What is it? You damage it? 
You no, broke it? You did not damage it. No, fuck. I oh. can't say that. No. So anyways, no. Uh, but uh, the last thing I do want to let everybody know, when you speak to your clients, let them know that they did pass the, they did sign the bill because now they are increasing officially the SPG and E. 12%. They just increased it. Anybody you know with San Diego Gas and Electric, 12% was what they just kicked in. And people are sweating it because, well, common sense tells you it's going to be bad. All right. I'll be here, I'll, I'll be here real, quick, real quick. I want to. Um, so, for the best Sonova and leasing and PPA, um, there's training every single Wednesday on the platform, guys, with Rachel. So, I put the links in. To the chat power calendar i put the link for this workshop uh this next wednesday from 10 o'clock to 11 she does a um a workshop on leases and ppas and oftentimes she'll have time to even talk to you if you have a specific issue um but uh really really good training so you need to uh log into that and uh uh and somebody said is, it, is there a replay no they do not ever record these just so you know Perfect. Anybody else? Last call for questions, comments, anything at all? Uh, Javier, yes. just a little comment. Uh, it would be nice if uh, our group can do some uh, exercises to do the simulation with different clients. You know, that's I think that's the best uh, training that we can get. You know, something like I did with uh, with Red, and he was very gen very gentleman helped me you know, to go through a case. And, uh, you know, it, it's to go in the last 10, 15 minutes each case. But, uh, man, you, you get so much knowledge of hundreds of hours watching video over, you know? Yes. So uh, if you have a case, you get, you, uh, like, uh, like uh, the one you presented, then you say you, you go into the power, uh, the solo proposal. The solo proposal, you got to know exactly what, with and you got it, what kind of inverter you got it, you know, and that, because it's going to be reflected into your neck, what is going to be for uh, San Nova. So if we can go and have some training this type, it will be nice. I would say we can definitely do that. We just need more. Right now, we probably have three people. Uh, the last time I checked, we had three people that were San Nova certified out of, out of 170, which is pretty sad. Because if you don't have the access to this, you're not going to be able to practice it anyways. And so I think you're right. And so Mike, what I'm asking everybody, let's get certified so we can share screens and walk you through what you're doing versus just watching us do it. Because like you said, you can watch a video a million times. I learned a lot from Red. From, and I also learned how hard it was. Just so you don't, like, the damn thing is just unbelievably. I mean, it's not a simple. It's not it's a simple. Not a, you know? I, 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 that's why I'm telling everyone. I'm not lying. I, I, I'll tell you. Uh, I had a hard time with vision. I got used to it. I love vision. That's all I do. Then I kept to this sudden over. It was like, what? Yeah, click here, this, that, big asthma, this crap, all the crap. And so See. you're going to have. So my question to my, my request to everybody, get your Sun Nova done this week. Let's see how serious people are about what Walter's asking for. Uh, but in that case, hell, I could just call Walter and Red, and we've all three trained together uh, before we leave everybody scratching their head. Like, what the hell did they just do? How did they do that? And, you know, so I think we need to do that. And you're going to have to be certified with Sonova anyways. Let's just get it done. But that's a good point. And we got other stuff we're going to be doing. I got well. three more modules. It, it takes an hour and a half, you said, uh, Red, to get certified? How, how, what, it's a, how, how long? Did I hear one, uh, one and a half hours to get certified? He did it. He's, he did it in one and a half hours. It took me, because I didn't do it all in one shot. It took me about 30, I did it in 30 minutes in about three hours because I was just watching TV and doing other crap at the same time. Vanessa <laughs> says she has a few more uh, modules to do. How long has it taken you so far, Vanessa? Um, I did the first four modules, I think in about, oh, I don't know, like, well, it was kind of cut up and I started like at five in the morning. I know I was, I had to finish by eight. So I think I was done about seven 30 or so. Got it. Okay. It took me a while. Yeah. And so I've got three more modules to do. And, and the problem with these things is you can't cheat. Usually I grab the slider and I drag it. Then I saw the whole damn video. It brings you back to where it's supposed to be. And you have to let that damn thing play. You have to let it play. I tried cheating it and it doesn't work. So, uh, you know, you just gotta have to sit there and God forbid you fall asleep. Then it, oh. you gotta start again. 
I, I just remembered, I'm sorry, because that included finishing up my battery certification. So I did, I started with the battery certification and then I started on Sonova. So I've got three more modules to do. That, yeah, I mean, it's so, not the end of the world. Well, yeah. Pardon? I said, it's not the end of the oh, world for everybody else. I mean, yeah. like, let's just say it takes you three hours or four hours or whatever the hell it took. You, you'll be certified. It's a one-time thing. It's not that hard. And get the battery certification. You're not going to be able to add the batteries. You're not going to be able to do that. Uh, and, and this is the new world that I'm telling you about. I'll leave you with the quote that I learned a long time ago, because a lot of people are so far behind that by the time they catch up on what we need to do, the world has changed again. And so that's where you know, people find themselves. And I learned a quote a long time ago, and it said, during times of change, the learners will inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves fully equipped to deal with the world that no longer exists. And that's what a lot of people do. I've, okay, I'm ready to go for this purchase. It's like, we do leases now, you know, go back to the, like, damn, six months later, leases. And guess what? For all we know, when rates come back down, screw the lease. Let's go back to purchases because that's where the money will be. I think the next game changer will be when the battery technology brings the prices down and the capacity higher, like it will. We're going to be doing that as well. So, all right, guys, thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. And above all, I want to just thank you for all that you do for being part of our life. And last but not least, of course, go Lakers. <laughs>